I'm Luke Ross for MixingLight.com and in this insight we're going to run through how to install Baselight Student with tips and advice straight from the Filmlight training team. Um, so I want to start by thanking Bob, Andy and Sam over at Filmlight for their help making this insight cram-packed full of good advice. Before we go online and download Baselight Student, try to have a couple of pieces of hardware with you. So an external hard drive and a mouse with a middle mouse button. So these two bits of hardware are really helpful when you're working in Baysight Student. So pause this video and uh, make sure that you have those two items uh, ready to go if you want to follow along. Now note as well, in terms of hardware, you can also plug in small panels. So for example, a film light slate panel or a tangent panel. Uh, but be aware that the full base light blackboard, uh, the, big, the big blackboard, um, is not compatible with base light student. Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and install Baselight Student. So the first thing is to head over to the Filmlight website, which is filmlight.ltd.uk, and that'll take you to the homepage. Uh, we'll go to the Training tab and the Baselight Student tab, and you'll see that to uh, download the software, you need to join the program on the right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in my details on this right-hand column here, and I'm going to go ahead and click Register when I'm done. Cool, so then it'll take you through to the order page. You're just gonna check that all of your information is correct. You might have to fill out some additional information. Go ahead, click next. Cool, and you can see the grand total is zero dollars, which is what you want to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and complete my order. Cool, so I have an order number here. And what should happen is you should get an email with all of the next steps to download Baselight Student. So you should get two emails, one to say that you've successfully ordered Baselight Student and the other email will have your download and license information. So if you have a look here at the file download and the 90 day license key, these two are the key bits of information. So we're gonna go ahead and click the Baselight Student Downloads, which will take us through to the download page. I'm gonna go ahead and click download. Just while that's downloading, I'm just gonna go back and copy this 90 day license key to my clipboard, Command C. Okay, great, so when the DMG is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and double click the PKG file and go ahead and click allow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, it'll say it'll take up a bit of space on my hard drive, that's all good. Go ahead and put my password in here. And this installation is nice and simple. You won't need to really do anything special for this one. Feel free to tick or untick this box and hit continue. And the installation was successful, fantastic. I'm gonna go and close this. I'm gonna move the installer into the bin. Nice, so that's the hard part done. So before we actually open up Baselight, First of all, we're going to go into the Setups Editor and make some changes. Then we're going to go into the Preferences Editor and make some changes too. And from there, we'll open up Baselight for the first time and get into it. Note, you can change these setups and preferences at any time, but I like to do it uh, before we open up Baselight, just so everything's set up uh, the way it's meant to before we get into it. So I'm going to navigate up to the Spotlight Search and type in Baselight Student. And I'm going to go ahead and double-click the Baselight Student folder. So as you can see, that's a quick navigation to get into your applications, Baselight Student. I'm gonna go ahead and click 5.3.1. And you can see we have access to a few additional Baselight shortcuts from this folder. The first step before we open Baselight is we're gonna go into the Baselight Setups shortcut. You can see that brings up the Setups Editor. And the first thing we're gonna do is click this cog and hit Duplicate Setup. And we'll give this a unique name. I'm gonna call this Luke's Mac and hit OK. Sweet, there we go. I'm gonna activate the setup got the green tick and I'm going to go show editor. Okay, so we're going to check a few things here. Firstly, in the primary video output, if you're on an iMac or a laptop with no external SDI adapter connected, um, you should have this no external output display and UI option selected. Uh, because I don't have any adapters, it's the only option for me here, so that's good. I'll leave that on the default. So we're going to ignore the audio settings and jump down to the display settings and have a look at our viewing color space. So the viewing color space should be set to the color space of the display. The viewing color space is currently set to Rec. 709 2.4 gamma. So this would be correct if uh, you had an external SDI display connected. But because I'm on a 2019 iMac, I'm going to go ahead and hit this viewing color space drop down and select 2.2 gamma P3 because this is a P3 screen. If you want to see slightly more options, you can hit shift while you're in this drop down menu to see all of the available options. There's another 2.2 gamma and Adobe RGB, and there's some other options here uh, for other laptop displays. But for now, I'm going to leave it on 2.2 gamma P3 D65. So again, the viewing color space should match the color space of your display. That's all we're going to do in the display tab. We're going to jump over to the new scenes tab and scroll down to the image containers and proxies section. 
So this is where we're gonna set our default container directory. So this is where all of your media will be stored. And we want this set on a drive location that's fast. So ideally an SSD or like a RAID configuration drive. At the start of this video, I mentioned it would be quite good to have an external hard drive. So what I'd recommend is maybe setting this default container directory uh, to your external hard drive or RAID or SSD. And then we'll set our cache um, just to our internal storage on my iMac. I actually don't have an external hard drive plugged into my iMac at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this on my desktop as an example. But if you do have an external hard drive, make sure to set this folder on your external hard drive. So I've navigated to my desktop and I'm gonna create a new folder with this icon up here, create folder. And I'm just gonna call this Baselight Media. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. That has now been set to my desktop Baselight Media. And I'm just gonna leave the medium res and low res containers blank for now. So I'm gonna go save, I'm gonna go quit, and you can see I've got my Luke's Mac currently active with a little tick, and I'm gonna go ahead, save, and quit. Cool, first step done. Uh, the next step is we're gonna go ahead, open the Baselight Preferences shortcut. So this is where we're gonna set the cache. We're gonna go ahead and click the Systems menu, and in the Cache sub-panel, we're gonna look at the Baselight on-disk cache location. So we've set our Baselight Media in the Setups Editor um, onto our external hard drive. So we're now gonna set our on-disk cache location to our desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead, click this browser folder, navigate through to my desktop, and I'm gonna create a folder here. I'm gonna call it Baselight Cache. Hit Enter, and hit OK. So now you can see uh, cache location set on my desktop, Baselight Cache. Now this is something to bear in mind. There's an on-disk image cache size field that you can change. At the moment, this is set to 20 gigs, uh, but if your laptop hard drive or iMac hard drive or SSD isn't the biggest and you want to make sure that uh, you don't fill up your available drive space with the cache, you could go ahead and change this to maybe 10 or even five gig, how, however much space you have on your machine. When the cache gets close to being full, it'll prompt you to expand the cache size. Uh, but just remember, um, the cache isn't essential for Baselight to run. It just helps speed up the process. This is fairly flexible and make sure to choose a cache size that works for your hard drive space. You can clear the cache with confidence though, because it won't harm your project. The cache only speeds up your work, so it's not essential. The only other thing that you might wanna set up in the system page is uh, your external devices. Um, so we mentioned that if you have a small panel, like a slate or a tangent panel, you can get that um, set up in this menu, but we don't have that today, so we'll just leave this blank. We're gonna go save, and we're gonna go quit. So that's all we need to do before we open up Baselight Student for the first time. Just remember, you can open up the setups and the preferences at any time, even after you've opened up Baselight. Um, but again, I prefer to do it first to just you know, get everything done in one go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open Baselight Student now. Now you can see Baselight Student has just started up for me. Uh, that's because I've actually already installed Baselight Student on this machine before. But just remember, um, if you haven't opened up Baselight before, uh, this is the point where you'll need to fill in your 90 day license key. So go ahead, uh, back to your email, make sure that's copied in your clipboard and just fill that in when prompted and click activate. Once you've activated it, it should last for 90 days. So you won't be able to see the main Baselight UI until you've activated your product. Okay, and we're in Baselight Student. So if you get stuck at any point, the Filmlight website is kept up to date with information and the student support email is monitored every day. So the Filmlight team are reachable and you can reach them at student at filmlight.ltd.uk and they aim to respond to any issues within 24 hours. Make sure to be specific with your problem. Um, so ideally take a screenshot or even just snap a picture of it with your phone so that the team can see the problem and get to the bottom of it quickly. Mac OS updates are notorious for uh, putting a spanner in the works for these type of installations. So if you have any issues, make sure to go send them an email. The next insight is gonna be a big one, but for now, thanks for watching. For mixinglight.com, I'm Luke Ross.